Welcome to the Chateau de Petit Somme, known as Radadesh, and thank you for your visit. The place you have come to has many interesting faces, and during this video we will introduce you to some of them. We will start with the history of the castle. The earliest record found about the chateau dates back to the 11th century. Its owner, Gozelon de Montaigu, plundered the property of the Abbey of Saint Hubert in 1065, and when he died, his widow, feeling guilty about her husband's crime, offered the castle, the church, and all her subjects to the abbey, which belonged to the Bishop of Liège. In the 14th century, the castle became part of the defensive territory of Luxembourg, which had acquired the castle as a payment of a debt it was owed. Then, for three centuries, until 1774, the castle was the residence of the aristocratic Hamal family, after which it was connected with several noble families from the Benelux and beyond. Around 1877, practically the whole original castle was demolished, and a new owner began rebuilding the old structure in its present neo-Gothic form, which was completed in little more than a decade. During the First World War, the castle became a hospital for the wounded and a shelter for hopeless villagers whose nearby houses had been destroyed. And at the end of the Second World War, during the Battle of the Bulge, American soldiers occupied the castle. After World War II, the castle and its 400 acres of forest again took on a philanthropic purpose and was established as a holiday and retreat center for students and teachers. In 1979, members of the emerging Hare Krishna movement bought it and began carefully renovating its structure and detailed beauty. So now let us look at the story of the castle's present owner. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness, or ISKCON for short, was founded by Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, a spiritual teacher from India. At the request of his spiritual master, he brought timeless wisdom to the West and spread it worldwide. ISKCON is rooted in the largest branch of Hinduism, called Vaishnavism. It promotes faith in the one supreme God, who, although having many names, in Vaishnavism is called Krishna or Vishnu. In the early 16th century, the great saint Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived in India. Through his illustrious example, he taught people to love Krishna by simply singing his holy names and by studying the sacred books Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. These practices became so widely accepted that a big social and religious movement was born in India. In the following centuries, teachers in Chaitanya's line have systematized his sacred message by writing philosophical books, devotional poetry and detailed ritual guides. In the 19th and 20th centuries, these teachings were further propagated in India through public lectures and by establishing temples. Then, in the 1960s, this detailed knowledge of love of God finally left the Indian subcontinent when Srila Prabhupada went to America to spread it worldwide. For 12 years, Prabhupada traveled extensively to teach self-realization through Krishna consciousness. He lectured almost every day and personally trained his young disciples. He also published dozens of books that put essential truths of spiritual knowledge into contemporary, everyday language. Prabhupada established a hundred centers for the worship of Lord Krishna. For the first time in history, people worldwide were discovering Lord Krishna. 
They were taking up the spiritual practices, chanting his holy names, Hare Krishna, and learning to love him. In its first 50 years, ISKCON has established over 650 centers worldwide. Its members have distributed over half a billion books and magazines in 80 languages and have handed out a few billion free vegetarian meals. As part of ISKCON and as one of the biggest centers in Europe, the Radhadesh community you are visiting significantly contributed to this success. Radhadesh is above all a spiritual community of Krishna devotees. Its members lead spiritual lives according to the instructions for daily practices given by the movement's founder, Srila Prabhupada. They attend a series of services in the temple. The first service begins rather early, at 4.30 in the morning, with collective singing by the gathered members. Then, for two hours, they practice personal mantra meditation and use beads, like a rosary, to chant the holy names of the Lord. This is followed by a lecture from sacred scriptures with a short discussion at the end. During the day and in the evening, there are other temple services that devotees can attend. In many places in Europe and around the world, Kirtan, or the singing of the Hare Krishna mantra, can be heard in the streets. Because it is their most important spiritual practice, devotees in Radhadesh daily sing and meditate upon this prayer. The members who accept a spiritual master or guru make vows that commit them to chanting a fixed number of Hare Krishna mantras daily. Community life in Radhadesh is based on basic religious principles such as austerity, cleanliness, non-violence and truthfulness. To fully benefit from these principles in their lives, Devotees practice these principles by not taking any alcohol or drugs. They also limit their sexuality within a religious marriage, eat only a vegetarian diet and do not gamble. Some members choose a monastic type of life in the castle, including celibacy and more intense spiritual practice, while others are married and live with their families in apartments and homes near the temple. The young children attend local schools. Throughout the day, devotees are engaged in many practical services which give them opportunities to actually apply and live the spiritual knowledge that souls are servants of Krishna. Members of Radhadesh work according to their inclinations and specific talents. Some like to take care of the beautiful altar and temple room while others have administrative skills. Some cook, give guided tours to the guests, or write and design publications. Others develop eco-initiatives such as gardening, providing solar energy, and caring for cows. Many friendly devotees work in the bakery, guest house, restaurant, gift shop, and the Museum of Sacred Art. Because of the attractive location and organized community, many short-term visitors and volunteers frequently come here just out of curiosity and stay for a while to take part in community life. There are also devotees from other countries who want to experience life in Radhadesh and stay for some time. Just like the world's major religions such as Christianity, Islam and Judaism, Radhadesh also has congregation members who live outside and have jobs elsewhere. Only 5 to 10 percent of ISKCON members live in communities or temples, while the vast majority live in cities throughout the world. They practice spiritual life at home and visit the temples for inspiration when they can.
Radhadesh is a source for inspiration for many. Since it is one of the major ISKCON temple communities in Europe, it attracts thousands of devotees looking for deep spiritual experiences. Every couple of months, they come for weekend visits and major festivals to meet their friends from all over the world and draw new inspiration for their spiritual lives. Devotees also take pleasure in attending outdoor summer parades and festivals held by the Hare Krishna movement in Paris, Amsterdam, Antwerp and other cities. These, plus many lively events such as weddings, seminars and the visits of student groups make Radhadesh a vibrant place. Apart from being a source of inspiration for ISKCON followers in Europe, this is also a place of worship for the Hindu communities of Belgium and Holland. Many thousands of them come here for Hindu holidays and festivals to cherish their religion and culture. Radhadesh is also a member of the Hindu Forum of Belgium which is working with the government to gain recognition of Hinduism. Although Hinduism includes various spiritual traditions, all of them, including the Hare Krishna movement, acknowledge the scriptural teachings about the soul, karma and reincarnation. It all starts with the philosophical insight that we are not our temporary physical bodies, but rather eternal souls. The soul reincarnates into different bodies according to its desires and the reactions to its past activities known as karma. According to the Vaishnava traditions within Hinduism, souls are part and parcel of Krishna, the Supreme Soul. When a soul is connected to him through loving devotion, its true nature is awakened. Thus, when its relationship to him is fully re-established, it does not reincarnate anymore in death, but returns to the spiritual world to serve God in happiness and knowledge. Members of the Hare Krishna movement strive to perform all their natural daily activities for Krishna's pleasure. Thus they sing for him, dance for him, cook for him or even work to please him. They discuss his glories and thus gather more knowledge about him, all for his pleasure. Forests of the Ardennes make a perfect setting for research and reflection. Throughout the years, Radhades has also established itself as an educational center of the movement, especially through its partnership with the Bhaktivedanta College. Here at the college, students from all around the globe can attend courses in theology and religious studies to obtain an undergraduate degree both on site and online. The college also has an affiliated online business school called the Alfred Ford School of Management, which trains ethical leaders by combining management knowledge with spiritual wisdom. Many retreats, seminars and conferences are organized for the movement's members, but the Radha's Guest House also offers its facilities to other organizations and groups for their own gatherings and programs. The spiritual atmosphere and the calm, natural setting of the castle, combined with a vegetarian restaurant, make Radhadesh an ideal conference center. Although part of an ancient spiritual tradition, the Hare Krishna movement is open to all, regardless of race, religion and gender. The Radhadesh community is a non-profit organization managed by its administrative council. Its main sources of income are membership, donations and tourism. 
The community has also made significant progress towards self-sufficiency by getting water from its own sources, electricity from solar panels and heating from a biomass heater. Over the years, Radetis has developed into a noted tourist attraction in the Ardennes. The community yearly welcomes numerous visitors, both individuals and groups, who are invited to roam around and enjoy the pleasant lawns and rose gardens. They can also admire various artistic expressions in the art museum. In addition to wandering through the historic castle and its exquisite temple room, they can find Indian handicrafts in the boutique or relish the vegetarian cuisine in the restaurant. Through all these opportunities, Radides strives to offer each visitor, such as yourself, a wonderful experience. We are grateful for your visit and hope that your stay in Radhadesh is enriching. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama.